Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about catabolite repression. You probably heard this name uh, many times but don't know what it is. So this is the right video for you. Now catabolite repression. So let's talk about the terms here, right? Catabolite repression, definitely something to do with catabolism of something. Now in this case, we talk about catabolism of carbohydrate. So let me take a color first. Okay. So, if we see here, the catabolism here is about the carbohydrates and then repression is due to this catabolic molecule, this is carbohydrate. So, the repression that is provided by carbohydrates here. So, the example of carbohydrates that we are going to talk here, usually the simplest, simplest form of carbohydrates and what are the examples I think all you know what is the example here the example here is glucose of course then obviously there is sucrose like that these are the examples they are kind of very simple carbohydrates they show a kind of repression against what now there comes the answer usually this is a system catabolite repression this is a system provided by the simplest carbohydrate molecules like glucose or sucrose to prevent metabolization of other carbohydrates, complex carbohydrate molecules until and unless these food sources are depleted. Let me explain to you. Let us say in an environment there are bacteria. Let us say these are the bacterial cells, bacterial cells out there, a lot of bacterial cells are there. Now, they eat glucose, fructose, they, they eat carbohydrate for their growth. Now, let us say in the medium, we have glucose, we have lactose, we have both molecules. Let us say we have more lactose, for example, and less glucose, whatever. But we, we do have glucose molecules here. So, here in this scenario, when there are multiple sources of carbohydrate presence, if there is the simplest kind of carbohydrate like glucose or sucrose, there are certain amount of carbohydrates out there. If they are present, they provide a repression of metabolizing other carbohydrate that is lactose here. So here actually glucose will not allow the bacterial cell to take up lactose first without taking glucose. Glucose if it is present, it will force bacteria to take all the glucose first, metabolize all the glucose first, then start initiating the metabolism of lactose. So here glucose is repressing the metabolism of lactose and the uptake of lactose by bacteria. And this is a repression showed by glucose towards lactose. That is called catabolite repression. The presence of glucose, if the glucose is present in high concentration, it will never allow other complex carbohydrate to be uptaken by a bacterial cell and then to be metabolized. That is called the catabolite repression. Now those molecules who show catabolite repression are called the repression catabolite. So the example here is glucose. So previously at the very beginning of discussion, people have discovered this glucose first as a catabolite repression molecule. So they term this as a glucose effect. This whole process of catabolite repression, they term this as a glucose effect. But now we have already seen, also seen that other carbohydrates can also have this ability of repression, catabolite repression. So this name is no longer that much valid, but you can call it. Okay. So that is in a sense is catabolite repression. So the scenario is if glucose is present along with other carbohydrate like lactose and there are cells outside, they want to take something. Glucose will be uptaken first, all the glucose will be depleted from the median, then the other carbohydrate source will be uptaken. So why so? Why that? Who is doing it? Bacterial cell or glucose? The answer here is combination of both. Glucose is repressing the uptake of lactose and then Bacteria have something to do with it. Bacterial genetics has something to do with it. And that is the operon of bacteria. That is what we will be seeing here. The exact process of catabolite repression. Now let us say, in this context, let us say, actually what happens inside the cell. Let us say if I draw the cell bacteria. 
this is the bacteria and this is inside the cell remember this is the inside of the cell and this is the outside in the outside we have glucose lot of glucose let's say and we also let's say we also have lactose these are lactose okay and there are receptors for glucose there are receptors for lactose whatever now here actually inside the bacterial cell for the uptake of lactose from outside they have a particular channel and that channel that is present here is called as permeas 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 is an enzymatic channel i mean it's a, it's a protein actually this is a channel that is present by the permeas protein and it allows this lactose to pass inside the bacterial cell and also there are other channels like glute receptors glu2 2 and 4 different kinds for the glucose uptake now let's say by those receptors through those let's say these are glucose transporter or receptor whatever glucose are transported inside the cell lot of glucose are inside the cell now so what glucose will do here this glucose will help in a internal signaling now remember there are two things so so the choice for bacteria is either taking glucose or lactose so for taking any of this glucose or lactose they should have this channels and open the channel taking up the thing inside now if you look at here in bacteria they have we have the genome of bacteria and if we draw the genome of bacteria what we have different operon concept the genetic regulations here so there is a call there is a region called promoter which is a controller section and then we let's say we have the enzymes let's say z y a these are the enzymes that will produce different uh, these are the genes that will produce different kinds of enzymes for example z produces beta galactosidase it produces something and then permease so these are the enzymes that are secreted by uh, i mean uh, that are produced by different gene translation here right let's say so these are the gene for the lac operon so if this operon is on and if these are, genes are synthesized these genes are trans, uh, transcribed and then translated into proteins they'll produce beta galactosidase permease and all these enzymes and both of these enzymes are required for the metabolism of lactose because lactose should be broken down and that can be done by beta galactosidase and for the uptake of lactose inside the cell we require permease so both of these are required now the presence of glucose in high amount inside the cell what it does actually it it turn on and off of important cellular signaling molecule that is present inside the bacteria and and the name of that molecule here is the phosphotransferase so there is phosphotransferase molecule so phosphotransferase is a type of molecules there are different examples of it like e2a and many different types uh, depending upon the type of bacteria whether it's a enteric bacteria or any other type of bacteria that varies but this phosphotransferase is present inside the bacterial cell now phosphotransferase when this phosphotransferase is dephosphorylated i mean once the, there is no phosphorylating group so no phosphate group present in this phosphor uh, i mean phosphotransferase enzyme in that case it becomes active and when the phosphate group is added it becomes inactive here so here this phosphotransferase when the presence of glucose is there this glucose will keep this phosphotransferase in the inactive i mean in the active form mainly in that case okay so here due to this this form mainly that is glucose is blocking or preventing the functionality usually if the phosphotransferase is present inside the cell what it does is that this phosphotransferase in in normal form with the phosphorylated condition there this phosphotransferase will go and it will help transcribing all these genes lac z y right because this phosphotransferase help in the interaction of or activation of of different other proteins like adenylate cyclase right those proteins now here in this case if the glucose is present it will inact it will make it activated uh, let's say uh, 
whatever uh, way you think actually. So in that case, this phosphotransferase, this enzyme loses the phosphate group and now it will inhibit. Once that thing is done, then this phosphotransferase, after being activated, it will inhibit the enzyme production. Inhibit, right? So if I draw it like this way, adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase is an important enzyme which helps to produce cyclic AMP. And cyclic AMP along with cyclic AMP receptor molecule or catabolite activation protein, CAP, both of them together, they act like a regulatory molecule and it can sit here to the promoter and can help in the transcription of this lac operon gene and then they will produce the proteins. Okay, so this is the scenario. Now, if glucose is present, it activates the phosphotransferase, but this phosphotransferase will block the production of adenylate cyclase, it will block the production of permease that is present here, it also blocks here. So, due to this effect by the phosphotransferase, the process of transcription of this beta galactosidase and permease gene is not possible and as a result of that, so if there is no beta galactosidase, lactose cannot be broken down. If there is no beta, no permease, lactose should not be uptaken in the first place. So without any permease, there won't be any lactose inside uptaken by the cell and even if it is uptaken, beta galactosidase is not there due to this activity of phosphotransferase. Due to that, that thing, beta galactosidase absence will no longer, I mean, help this lactose to be broken down. So for that reason, the whole process of lactose, of lactose uptake and breakdown is halted, is inhibited and that is inhibited by the presence of glucose. This is a way glucose controls this whole situation and that is called the catabolite repression because it is important because the bacteria, why bacteria do that thing or why, why things are actually, so many people think that why bacteria do catabolite repression, actually bacteria never does anything here. Whatever is uh, going on, it is by the carbohydrate molecule, that is why at the very beginning I have talked to you that this is carbohydrate which is repressing the activity and metabolism of another carbohydrates, right. So that's it. If you like the video, please subscribe, hit the like button, share this video to your friends in social networking sites. Thank you.